Hello everybody! You read the title. Today we're going region by region and I'm giving our not so professional opinion on which pass between Epic and Icon you should buy. We're going to keep it short, sweet, and to the point. Of course, if you want to support Indie or Mountain Collective, we would absolutely recommend doing that if it works for you. But for the majority of you, only Epic or Icon will do, which is why we're only getting into those two today. Our regions are going to be Western Canada, Pacific Northwest, California, the Northern Rockies, Utah, Colorado, the Midwest, Eastern Canada, the Northeast, the Central and Southern East Coast, Europe, Japan, and Oceania. I'll explain what exactly each region contains as we go. Oh, and yes, we are going to count partner resorts just as much as a resort that's fully on the pass. As I said, this is obviously solely our opinions, and we would love to hear all the reasons why we're wrong down in the comments. So with that, let's begin the grand debate of Epic versus Icon. We'll begin with Western Canada. In British Columbia and Alberta, each pass offers access to a handful of small to medium sized hills. However, the headlines for the passes are Kicking Horse and Whistler Blackcomb for the Epic Pass and Lake Louise, Sunshine Village, and Revelstoke for the Icon Pass. Revelstoke and Kicking Horse can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, as they are both legendary expert mountains, although we personally would give the slight edge to Kicking Horse. But in our minds, Louise and Sunshine are both individually better than Whistler, just due to the sheer inconsistency of snowfall and massive crowding issues of Whistler. Because of that factor, we have to give Icon an extremely slight edge for Western Canada. If you get Whistler on a good week, however, then Epic would be the move, but because that cannot be guaranteed, we recommend Icon. Jumping down to the Pacific Northwest, Washington and Oregon, we see Epic's Stevens Pass, the host of the 2021-22 ski season national news debacle, pitted against Icon's Crystal Mountain, Summit at Snoqualmie, and Mount Bachelor. From what we've heard from all of our friends in the skiing community, despite never having skied in the PNW ourselves, out of all four resorts just mentioned, Stevens Pass would rank dead last. It doesn't have nearly as cool of terrain as Alpental, is much smaller than Bachelor, and of course is sheerly outnumbered by the trio of Icon resorts. As such, this is a no question Icon suggestion. Alright, California. Epic has the Tahoe trio of North Star, Kirkwood, and Heavenly. With North Star and Heavenly, it is the best pick for lower level skiers solely wishing to visit Tahoe, as those two excel in groomers. However, the Icon Pass features Palisades Tahoe, which makes it a better option for true experts visiting Tahoe. Add in Mammoth Mountain and a handful of smaller resorts around the state, mostly closer to Los Angeles, and for the entire state, we lead an icon. I mean, Palisades and Mammoth just themselves are so iconic that we almost have to give this to Icon sheerly out of guilt. We will, however, add in the disclaimer that for Tahoe only, Epic is a very competitive option, but for the whole state, Icon is the better option. Next is the Northern Rockies, consisting of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Icon features Schweitzer, Sun Valley, Jackson Hole, and Big Sky, which is an absolutely stacked lineup. If I can only ski one pass in one region, it would be those four resorts. Icon wins by default here, and even if Epic did have any holdings in the region, it would still lose. Next we head to Utah, which is a sheer numbers game. While Park City is very competitive for its size, town, and grooming coverage, it alone just can't compete with the combination of Deer Valley's groomers, the Cottonwood Quartet's extremes, and, on top of all that, the ever-improving Snow Basin. That Utah Icon contingent has it all, and even the biggest and baddest can't beat it. Oh, and the NIMBYs blocking every project ever at PCMR didn't help our decision here either. Icon all the way. Now we get into the thick of it in Colorado, and this one is extremely difficult. Epic features Vail, Keystone, Breckenridge, Beaver Creek, Crested Butte, and Telluride. Those resorts have a fantastic combination of bowls, extremes, groomers, mountain villages, and huge resorts. What it lacks is a smaller, less bustling resort, which is where Icon's Arapaho Basin comes into play. Throw in the moguls of Winter Park, the trees of Steamboat, the town of Aspen and its four mountains, the up-and-coming Copper Mountain, and the oft-forgotten Eldora, and you have a formidable adversary. This can go either way, honestly, no matter what type of skier you are. However, while we believe that Epic and Icon's advanced and expert offerings are relatively comparable, we believe that Epic's mountains as a whole offer better lower-level terrain. As such, we are giving the Epic Pass a razor-thin edge in Colorado, but again, this one is so case-by-case. Let's jump over to the Midwest, where the Epic Pass offers a plethora of options while Icon offers only two. 
Boyne Mountain, and what used to be called Boyne Highlands. In our opinion, Icon's two options are much higher quality options than the offerings of Epic. They are much better embodiments of ski resorts rather than just ski areas. However, Epic features Afton Alps, Boston Mills, Brandywine, Hidden Valley, Wilmot, Alpine Valley, Snow Creek, Brighton, Mad River, and Paoli Peaks. That sheer quantity, along with the spread of Vale's offerings in the Midwest, makes us lean epic here. Heading a bit north, let's talk Eastern Canada. Now, in all honesty, if you live in Eastern Canada, Epic and Icon are not that good of options. So for the sake of this video, I'd say this is only going to help those of you who live somewhere else with predominantly Epic and Icon resorts, but are planning to take a trip or two to Quebec or Ontario. The Epic Pass offers access to Stoneham and the much beleaguered Mont St. Anne. Icon offers access to Blue Mountain, which on its own would lose, but also Mont Tremblant, which saves Icon's offerings. Honestly, we don't know enough about skiing in Eastern Canada to tell you guys definitively, but if we had to buy one pass or the other for ourselves for this region, we would buy Icon. Tremblant is commonly considered the best in the region, so we'd go for that. Next, we head to the Northeast, consisting of Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and New York. On Epic, you have Hunter Mountain, Mount Snow, Okemo, Stowe, Wildcat Mountain, Atitash, Mount Sunapee, and Crotched Mountain. Of those, Okemo, Stowe, and Mount Snow are the headliners, while Hunter, Sunapee, and Atitash are solid support. Crotched and Wildcat don't really stick out as destination resorts. On the other side, you have Stratton, Sugarbush, Killington, Sunday River, Sugarloaf, and Loon Mountain headlining. Already, you can see Icon having an upper hand. Then throw in the supporting cast of Pico and Wyndham. Yeah, Icon wins pretty easily here. Okimo and Stowe are both solid resorts, but so are each of the Icon headliners. In the Northeast, it's a numbers game because you don't see nearly as many resorts that are focused on one ability level or anything like that. In our opinion, East Coast quality tends to be pretty similar, so it solely comes down to quantity, which Icon has the upper hand in. Over in the Mid-Atlantic region containing Pennsylvania and West Virginia, Epic has its first landslide victory. Again, just as with the true Northeast, the quality is relatively similar, but the quantity ball is wholly in Epic's court. Of course, Camelback, Blue, and Snowshoe on Icon are all some of the best resorts in this region, but with a lineup consisting of Hidden Valley, Laurel, Whitetail, Liberty, Jack Frost, Big Boulder, and Round Top, Epic has the advantage. Oh, and they have Seven Springs, which could almost single-handedly sway us to Epic. So if you weren't sure before, now you should be. Now, similarly to Eastern Canada, for each of these next two regions, you shouldn't be buying either of these passes for these regions exclusively. This is just if you're going to live in a predominantly Icon or Epic region and plan on venturing over to Europe or Japan. Starting with Europe, on Epic you have access to Les Trois Vallées, Verbier, Quatre Vallées, Cran Montana, Andermatt Cedrun, Skirama Dolomiti, and Arlberg. Three Valleys, Four Valleys, and Arlberg are all huge. The other three, however, are not generally considered European headliners. On the Icon Pass, you have Gran Valera, the only option in the Pyrenees, and St. Morris as their supporting cast. Their headliners are absolutely stacked. Kitchbiel, Dolomiti Superski, Zermatt, Chamonix. All four of those names are included in the debate for the best in Europe. Each of those four, we would argue, is just as, if not more, iconic than the Epic headliners. So by another very slim margin, we have to give this one to Icon. Over in Japan, Epic offers Rusutsu and Hakuba, which contains a bunch of smaller resorts within the larger domain. Icon offers access to the most westernized resort, Niseko, and a smaller resort, Arai. Overall, we don't know enough about Japan to officially say which is better, but if we were choosing for ourselves, we would choose Epic. Having that wealth of options would be more valuable than the name recognition of Niseko. Alright, for the final region, we have the continent of Australia. On Epic, you have the Australian trio of Hotham, Falls Creek, and Perisher. On Icon, you have Threadbow and Mount Buller in Australia, and the Big Three in New Zealand, which consists of Coronet Peak, The Remarkables, and Mount Hutt. Perisher is the biggest resort on the continent, and Hotham is considered the best for experts in Australia. However, many people we talk to much prefer Threadbow over Perisher. And of course, that's completely ignoring the fact that there seems to be a general consensus that skiing is better in New Zealand. It has more consistent snow, better extreme terrain, and is generally less busy. 
considering that Icon is the only one to have anything in New Zealand, and at that nearly half of the seven big resorts, we'd lean in the direction of Icon here. We were surprised when writing this with how many regions Icon won. We thought it would be much more even. Is that a result of us messing up, or is that really how it is? Tell us down below. Of course, please do remember that everything said in this video was our opinion only. We would love to hear your opinions down below as well. As always, please put any questions down there as well. Thank you all for watching. All my love, I'm out.